Hey guys, Weeby News here, and today I wanted to do just a fun little video, you know, going over all the deaths of our favorite characters. For this video, I'm just gonna be including the games from the mainline series, so I'm not gonna be covering the anime or Ultra Despair Girls. Also, another thing I want to quickly plug before we start the video, I decided to enable memberships on the channel again, since I've been able to stay somewhat consistent now, and my mental health is a lot better. If you're interested in becoming a member of the channel, it's basically just like $1.99 per month, and you get emotes that you can use in the comments and in live stream chats. Also, you'll have access to a membership only Discord. So it's just me and my moderators and some other people and you can hang out with us if you want. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that in case any of you guys are interested in that. And also please remember to like and comment and subscribe if you do enjoy this video. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Okay, first on the list, we have Jen Kirigiri's execution. And I feel like this execution is pretty iconic. I think I'm gonna put it in the S tier. I feel like it's such a good like opening for the series. I think I mentioned it in my execution explained video, but to me it like perfectly embodies like the psycho pop theme of Danganronpa that they decided to change it to um, once they kind of scrapped the idea of distrust. Cause I mean the execution's pretty brutal and very like disturbing, but it's also kind of like goofy and cartoonish in a way. So I feel like it does a good job of kind of like showing the two sides of Danganronpa, which is kind of like the funny, goofy, like pop side while also showing like the side that's kind of disturbing and grotesque that fits with like the psycho part of the psycho pop theme. I like the fact too that it comes back around at the end of the game and you learn that it's Kirigiri's dad and it has um, some kind of importance to the series. I feel like I would like it less if it was just kind of like a random person Monokuma executed, you know? Next on the list is Makuro Ikusaba. And I think I'm gonna put this one in A rank. It did rather surprise me when it happened. And something I really like about Makuro's death is that I feel like it made the killing game a lot more serious. I like the fact that it kind of makes the killing game real. And similar to Jin's, I like the fact that she actually does end up being like a pretty important character in the grand scheme of things. Okay, next we have Mizuno's death. I'm kind of torn between putting this one in B or C. I think I might lean on putting it in B because I do like the setup. I like the fact that she died in Makoto's room and like everybody suspected him. I feel like it gave Makoto a lot of like reasoning to become really heavily involved in the trials. And I like the fact that it kind of set him up for that leadership position because you know, everybody's blaming him. So of course he has to take lead and kind of convince everybody that he wasn't the one who did it. I think it's kind of cool that he had to earn the respect by like proving himself innocent and kind of solving the case because it was all in his room and he was set up to be like the villain in the scenario. The reason I kind of like lean towards putting it in C is just because like for me I was an idiot and I didn't realize she spelled Leon behind her but a lot of Let's Players I watch now like it's really hard for me to watch the first chapter because so many of them like guess automatically they're like she wrote Leon upside down on the on behind her like how does nobody get this and I'm like oh I'm like oh no they're gonna think this game is bad just because they got that first one. I feel like usually by the time they get to the second chapter, they're like, okay, like there is complicated mysteries in this game. And um, I feel like it's kind of something that makes a lot more sense in like the Japanese version of the game, because I'm sure like Japanese people, a lot of them don't speak English. So they wouldn't notice immediately that like a Leon spell behind her. But for English speaking players, it can be kind of obvious, which is why I kind of almost lean towards it being like a C plus, you know what I mean? Okay, next on the list is Leon. And I love Leon's execution. I'm gonna put this in S plus. I mean, I just feel like Leon's execution is just so iconic. And if you guys haven't watched my Executions Explained video, I really recommend it because when I was researching for it, there was just so much more detail like put into it than even like I had thought. I do remember forever ago, I read that Kadaka had already planned like Mizuno and Leon dying first because they were like the base models that they used for all the characters and they were sick of looking at them. So I believe that Leon was definitely planned to die first. And I think his execution came before his character, but I like the fact that they tied in like his free time events to his character with the fact that like he doesn't like baseball he especially hates like training. So he's literally dying in like a batting cage, which is used for baseball training. And so I feel like there's just a lot of like details put into it like that, that I really enjoy. I feel like it really um, emphasizes like the serious situation that they're in. I feel like it's kind of easy to forget because Danganronpa can be goofy, you know, like Monokuma is just this cute little teddy bear and he's like, you know, making them kill each other. But it kind of, it kind of has this like cartoonish vibe to it. And I really like the fact that they kept this like distrust execution from um, the beta that is just so intense and like so disturbing because it really, really makes you sympathize with the characters and what they're going through. And I really just like the fact that it shows like how serious the situation is and how brutal these executions can be. Okay, next up we have Chihiro's death. And I 
think I might put this one in S rank. It's been so long since I played this game, but um, I'm pretty sure I got this one spoiled. But funnily enough, I got it spoiled like while I was on chapter two, like right before it happened. But I was really surprised when I saw that Chihiro died. And that whole chapter two, I like um, really wanted to hang out with Chihiro, but I was like, well, you know, they're gonna be a really important character. Like I'll have plenty of chapters to hang out with them. And then he died <laughs> like right after that. And I was so bummed because I think I got spoiled like right after I passed the free time events too. So I wasn't able to hang out with him. But yeah, other than it being like really shocking and sad, I really like the setup for this death. Like I mentioned before, I feel like the second chapter is when you kind of get to see Danganronpa shine a bit more. And I really enjoy watching like Let's Players play it because I love having to like solve the mystery of Tagami messing with it, setting up Fukawa to look um, suspicious and testing Naegi and all that. It really added a lot more mystery to um, an already pretty mysterious death in and of itself. I overall just found like this whole death and mystery around it to be really good. Um, pretty top tier for Danganronpa in my opinion. Okay, next we have Owada's execution. I hate Owada's execution. I do. I can't, I can't tell a lie. I think the only good thing about it to me is just like the memes, like the butter memes. I feel like Leon's execution is so cool because it's so realistic. It's so like gritty. It makes everything feel so serious. And then Owada's execution is just so goofy. You know what I mean? With like the butter thing. And like, I might've put it in C tier, but um, after I made the executions explain video, I ended up disliking it more because um, the story that it's based off of, Little Black Sambo, is very offensive. I just don't know why they would want to base something off of that story, but like uh, the depictions of the characters in the book are just very offensive. They depict black characters very offensively, and I just don't like it. I don't like the fact that it's based off of that. I don't like the fact that he it's just so random and weird and kind of like changes the tone of the game in a way. I love Iwata. I was sad to see him go, but I hate the execution and my love for Iwata cannot make up for my hatred for this execution. Next is Kiyotaka Ishimaru. And I was really sad to see Ishimaru go because I really love his character. I can relate to him a lot being kind of like socially awkward, but also like really hardworking, you know what I mean? And um, I really encourage anybody to play his free time events if you haven't already, because he's just such a likable character. And of course, like I could really sympathize with them too with Iwata's death and like um, their bond. I'm not really sure if I want to put this in B or C. I might put it in C just because it was like, even though I was really sad to see him go, it was kind of a death I saw coming because he was acting just like so erratic beforehand. I wasn't super crazy about the whole like Super San Ishimaru thing that he did right beforehand too. It just really made his death kind of, kind of obvious. I would want to put it in B just for my love of Ishimaru, but yeah, not the best death in my opinion. And then next we have Hifumi Yamada. I don't really have too strong of an opinion on Yamada. I wasn't too sad when he died, but I wasn't like happy either. You know what I mean? I'm going to put it in C. It was more shocking than Ishimaru just because like it was the first time there was a double murder. So I was surprised to see like somebody else die. He did leave behind some really important um, evidence in that last scene right before he died saying um, Celestia is a real name. But um, other than those things, I don't really find it to be like a super exciting death. I don't know. <laughs> it's not one I really think about when I think of like top deaths in Danganronpa. So I think C is appropriate for it. I'm just going to put it there. Okay, next we have Celestia Ludenberg's execution. I love Celeste's execution. I hate her chapter but I love her execution. I feel like it's S rank, honestly. That's just such a good execution. It really captures her character. I feel like I've said it like a million times on my channel at this point. And um, I really recommend you watch like the Executions Explained video or like my Celestia analysis. If you want, you know, the full explanation as to why this execution is so good in my opinion, but it just really captures her character in my opinion because Celestia's worst fear was being like a normal ordinary person. And Monokuma sets it up to where she has like this grand, big, like, um, you know, seemingly important execution. It's like, you know, the burning of a Versailles witch. And um, she has the stage with Monokuma is watching her and you can tell that she feels like happy in those moments. And then he just hits her with the fire truck and she gets killed in an automobile accident, which is like one of the most common ways to die. So she had to die feeling as like a normal person, which I just think was really good. It was a really smart idea of them. And yeah, I really like this execution. Oh yeah, I just don't notice. They had Kiyotaka and Yamada, the discovery when they find them together. I'm gonna put that in C as well. I don't really have too much to say about that. Okay, next up is Sakura's death. And I think I'm gonna put it in S as well. <laughs> I'm very easy to please so far <laughs> based off of this list. I guess I really love Sakura's case. I love her as a character. I love the mystery surrounding her death. I just, I really love that 
that trial, that whole chapter. Her whole death and trial too made me really come to love like Asahina and really have like a new found like love for their friendship too. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in an S. I just, I really like that whole um, trial and everything. And I was so sad to see Sakura go. Okay, so next we have Alter Ego's execution, and I think I'm gonna put this one in A rank as well. I like the symbolism that I included in my Executions Explained video, how like Monokuma turns Alter Ego into this like black Monokuma ball, symbolizing how he turned hope to despair. I think that part's pretty cool. I also liked how like surprising it was, like I was really upset to see Alter Ego die, and I did not expect it at all, so I was super surprised by just like how off guard it caught me. But other than that, I just don't really think of the execution being like quite as iconic as like Jin's or Celestia's. Okay, next we have the mysterious body that was Makuro Kasaba's. I may put it in S. <laughs> I am very easy to please, I'm learning. I just thought this death was cool. I thought it was so interesting. I don't know, I just, I love that chapter too. Probably like um, one of the chapters that really made me fall in love with Danganronpa, like the mystery of like who the body was. It was just such a good chapter. I love the fact too that once they tried to like actually explore the body, it just blew up and Fukawa just like flies through the sky. That was so funny. I love love that scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in S rank. I thought it was cool. Okay, so we got Makoto and Kirigiri's execution. <laughs> Why am I so easy to please? I'm also gonna put this in S rank. <laughs> <laughs> I love this execution. It's so fun. I just love like the alternate ending that you can get by like, you know, not trusting Kirigiri. And like I've said, I feel like a million times, I really want Danganronpa to have like more alternate routes or like bad ends or something. It's just like so interesting to feel like, wow, my decisions like actually have weight. You know what I mean? Okay, next we have Junko's execution. I'm gonna put this in C rank. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of Junko's execution, to be honest. I um, kind of get what they were trying to do with like having her go through all the executions and it does fit her character because she wants to feel like all of the despair, you know, through going through all the executions. And I'm sure it's like very painful for her to have to do so. And I think I would have preferred if she had like her own unique execution. And I guess you could think like, well, you know, Weeby, she didn't plan to die. She didn't plan for her, you know, decision to fail. But I feel like Jinko loves despair enough to create her own execution as like a backup. I just feel like she would love doing that, coming up with like an execution that's gonna cause her so much despair. I could see that being a thing. So that's why I'm gonna put it in C. I don't I hate the execution, but it's not my favorite, yeah. So next up is Hagakure's death from the Dinerapa 1 and V3 demos, and I think I'm gonna put this one in B as well. He can lie next to Mizuno in the same position. Um, I love the meme for this one. I just love the fact that they killed him off again in V3. That was so funny to me. But um, other than that, I don't really have too much to say about it. It's just a good meme, and I hope a lot of fan games um, decide to continue perpetuating the meme and they kill him in their demos too, just because it's so like random and funny to me. Next we have Mon Monami's execution. Originally, I probably would have put this in C, but I'm actually gonna move it up to B. I think one of the good things about it is, you know, you do get to see like how dangerous the mana beasts are. And I think that's kind of a cool aspect of it. One of the big reasons why I wanted to include it on B instead of C was actually something that one of you guys pointed out in the comment sections of my Dinerapa 2 explain video. Okay, so the comment said, the only detail in Monami's execution that I always notice now is that when Hajime gets grazed by a bullet from the Gatling gun, it cuts him in the same place that Izuru was shot in episode seven of the Despair arc. I just think that that's so cool that they decided to include that in the anime and um, to kind of have a like mirror that. Okay, next up we have the ultimate imposter, also known as Tugami. I think I'm gonna put his death in A rank. I always um liked the mystery surrounding Tugami, like when you first begin playing the game, because obviously, you know, they look like Byakuya and that's like such a mysterious um part at the beginning of the game. I did kind of suspect him to die just because, you know, when you first begin playing, you think they're Tugami. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for them to like stick around very long. And also they were like such a big leader. I feel like their death really kind of sets up Hajime to take control of the trials and stuff because I think beforehand, you know, Tugami would have really tried to take control and I don't think it really would have given Hajime that opportunity to like really take charge and kind of become a leader. Because I feel like at the beginning of the game, he was really kind of content to just kind of like sit back and not do too much. So um, I like that aspect of it too. I like the mystery surrounding it too, like the whole thing with like Kamida and Teru how all the evidence is really pointing to Kamida, but then it ends up being Teru. I just thought the whole mystery surrounding it, the whole setup, just everything was really good in my opinion. So it's a death I enjoyed a pretty good bit. Okay, next we have Terra Terra's execution. I'm not the biggest fan of Terra Terra's execution. I think I might put it in C rank. I really enjoyed like the backstory that Terra Terra got before his execution. I like the fact that they built a lot of sympathy up for him before he died. And I really like the mystery, you know, surrounding his a murder scheme. I thought that was really cool. But um, the execution itself, I'm not the biggest fan of. I do like the fact that it like um, resembles Leon's from the previous game. But other than that, it was kind of goofy to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember kind of feeling like, oh, man, there's gonna be goofy ex 
executions in this game too. Like this is giving me Mondo Butter vibes. Not quite as bad as Mondo Butter to me, but um, still not really one of my favorites. Okay, next on the list is Mahiri's death and I'm kind of torn. I feel like this is another like C plus for me maybe. I think I'm gonna lean towards putting it in B because I do love that trial. I love like um the whole, you know, like circumstances of her death with like Pekko, you know, protecting Fihiko and all of that and how much you learn about the characters from this case. Other than that and it being like a surprising death, I don't really have too much to say about it, which makes me feel like I should put it in B rather than like a bit higher, like A or S. Okay, next we have Pekka's execution. I feel like I fangirl this execution all the time. I'd put an S plus actually. I love Pekka's execution. It's so good. I mean, like, I like the fact that it connects to her character so well. I really like the fact that it's like the only time you really see somebody else like try to interfere with an execution. And like the fact that it at least led me to believe that Fuyihiko died too. It was very, very intense and definitely one of the most like memorable executions like in my my mind, so I'm gonna put it in S plus. Okay, next we have Nekamaru's death. Death. <laughs> when he turns into a robot. I didn't really care for this one very much. I'm actually gonna alter the list a little bit because I didn't want to put it next to Mondo's execution because I hate that one so much. I'm gonna put this one in D. It's very own rank and I'm gonna move down Mondo Butter to F. Yeah, I didn't really care for this one. I like Nekomaru a lot as a character and I was like really worried for him when it happened, but when he came back as a robot, it kind of made me just dislike the whole, I don't know, the whole scenario. It didn't make a lot more sense once they revealed that they were like in a virtual world. So I didn't mind it quite as much after that reveal, but I remember like right when he came back as a robot, I was like, this is weird. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of this. It's just kind of goofy, you know? Okay, next we have Ibuki's death. And I really liked Ibuki. I think I might put her as an A rank. I'm pretty sure I remember suspecting that she might die just because she had that like naive sickness from um, the despair disease or whatever it was. I was pretty sad to see her go. So even though it wasn't like the most shocking death, it was really sad because Ibuki's such a sweet character. I liked the circumstances around it, like Hajime watching like the tape and trying to save her just to learn that it was like, there was nothing he could really do about it. It was really sad and kind of a cool aspect about it to me. So I'm going to put it in A rank. Okay, next we have Sayunji's death and um, <laughs> it was probably one of the only deaths I was like legitimately happy that she died. I know people are to get mad at me. I don't hate Sayonji anymore, but I did hate her a lot when I first played the game. After making my analysis on her, I definitely was able to like understand why people like her. She's still not my favorite character. I think now I wouldn't necessarily cheer, you know, from her dying, but um, I don't know that I'd really be that sad either. I didn't really feel like um, the events surrounding her death were like as interesting either, you know what I mean, as Ibuki's. So I'm going to put her in C rank. Okay, next we have Mikan's execution, which similar to Wada's, I hate with a burning passion. Oh God, I hate Mikan's execution. Just everything about it is just like weird and uncomfortable. I feel like Mikan was such an interesting character and I feel like the hospital setup could just like really create like a very creepy and like aesthetically interesting looking execution. And I know it's kind of there in the beginning, but once it switches to the arm thing, you know, it's just weird and just in bad taste in my opinion, but I'll get to that. So I was kind of disappointed that they didn't follow up with the hospital theme. Cause I think that's a pretty cool idea. And then with it being just like in bad taste because obviously Mikan has like a lot of sexual trauma and I understand that, you know, it makes sense that Monokuma would want to like torture her because of that. But like they just do it in like this really fan service -y way that just makes it so uncomfortable. So I just, I hate that execution. I'm sorry. Okay, next up we have Nekamaru's death. And um, I think I'm gonna put this one in B rank too. I really loved like the mystery of the fun house. I thought that was so confusing when I first played it. And I feel like that whole like case just really stands out because of it. Other than that, I don't really remember how exactly I felt about his death. I really liked Nekamaru before the robot thing, but like once he became the robot, I was like, this is so weird and goofy. Like I kind of leaned towards wanting Danganronpa to like take itself a bit more seriously. I like the cartoonish vibe that it has. But sometimes when it does like these really goofy things, like it kind of like shifts the tone a little too much for me on the goofy side. So I wasn't crazy about it. But yeah, other than that, I don't really have too much to say about it. I'm gonna put it in B rank. Okay, next up is Gundam's Execution. I like this one a good bit. I think it's a solid um, A rank for me. It's not uh, my favorite out of the executions, but I do like the fact that it connects so much to his character. It always really confused me how, you know, Gundam was doing that like summoning circle with his little like anime chuny powers. I always thought it was really weird that like it seemed like it was working the last minute it like didn't work, you know what I mean? But I think it makes a lot of sense that Monokuma would set it up because, you know, it's in a virtual world so he can kind of control a lot of things. 
things and make it seem like, yeah, Gundam, you have these anime powers and like you can keep fighting for life. Then at the last second to kind of like make it, you know, very apparent to him that he doesn't have any powers and he can't protect himself. I feel like that's really despair inducing. And I like the fact that it shows that Gundam was, you know, still fighting for his life till the very end, since that was like such a big theme that he was trying to uh, get across in his trial. Okay, next we have Kamida's death. Oh, this is definitely S rank for me. I love Kamida's death. Not because I don't like him as a character, but I love his whole plan and like the mystery surrounding it. It was so cool. I definitely saw his death coming because he was acting very, you know, erratic and like um, he kept kind of like talking cryptically and going off by himself. So I was like, oh God, he's definitely dead. <laughs> but the real like mystery and shocking part of this trial was definitely Kamida's plan and how he was trying to single out the traitor in order to save them. Kamida really was like the only person to come up with like a totally unsolvable murder. Like the only reason they were actually able to decipher it was because they knew he relied on his ultimate luck so much. Actually, now that I'm talking about this, I'm gonna move it to S+. I love, that's really gotta be like the best death in the series. Like I was really sad to see him go, but um, that whole trial, that whole case was just so good. Really one of my favorite cases in the whole Danganronpa franchise. And was definitely one of the things that like ignited like my obsession with Danganronpa really wanting to like, revisit stuff and like break it down more. Uh, I just get like chills thinking about it. I love that case so much. Okay, next we have Shiaki's Execution. I'm also gonna put those in S+. Like I said, that whole, that's really gotta be like one of my favorite chapters in any Danganronpa game. And like Chiaki dying was so shocking to me. Like I really did not expect her to be executed. I really didn't expect her to die at all. Cause she really seemed like, you know, the Kirigiri of the second game. Like she's gonna be there till the end, like helping you out. The events like leading up to her death were just like so sad too. Like when she's trying to kind of like confirm to Hajime that she is in fact the traitor, but she can't just like outright say it. And then Monami defending her. Oh god, that trial is just like so emotional. And then her execution just like, it relates so well to her character and it's just like so cool. I mean like, I almost like wanted her to like escape somehow, you know what I mean? <laughs> Watching her and Monami like fight till the very last minute, it made me root for her and it was a really exciting execution. So I definitely think that one is a very top tier death execution, just everything. Like I said, love that case. Okay, next up is AI Jinko's execution. I'm gonna put this one in D tier too. I mean like it's cute to see Monami have her magical girl powers, but other than that, it's not the most exciting execution ever. Okay, next up we have Rontaro's death, and I was really debating about putting this one in A or S rank. I think I'm gonna move it up to S rank. The reason I was contemplating putting it in A rank instead of S is, I don't know how other people feel about it, but I really saw Rontaro's death coming. Like, he just was acting so, like, cryptically, and he kept going off by himself. It was just like, yep, he's, he's dead. I really didn't want him to die, but um, I felt like it was kind of, like, obvious almost just because of how he was acting. But regardless of that, I do think it still deserves an S just because, like, the mystery surrounding it was so good in my opinion. I don't know how it was for other people, but I didn't see any of the clues <laughs> like during the investigation that Kaede committed it. I think it's really cool to like look back and kind of like see the hints. I thought they did a really good job, like kind of like creating the mystery around Rontaro's death and then like the protagonist um, being the killer. I thought that was pretty cool. And then we have Kaede's execution. Oh my God, <laughs> definitely S plus because it was just so sad. And for me, it was surprising. I really didn't want her to die. I didn't expect it, but the execution was just so good too. I think V3 really has my favorite executions because I feel like it rides like that psycho pop aesthetic so well, you know? It's like, they're all really disturbing, but they're all like really kind of over the top still. So they still feel like Danganronpa. I just, um, I really feel like they did a good job with those executions. And I feel like Kaede is like a perfect example of that. Then obviously like the circumstances leading up to her death were just so sad. It was so difficult to like have to accuse her and to see how badly it affected Saihara. And those of you that watched my V3 playthrough did get to hear me cry like a baby <laughs> when he goes to visit the piano room. So that was fun. But yeah, for me, it's definitely S plus rank. Um, one of the most memorable executions in the whole franchise for me. Okay, next we have Mono Kid. It might be kind of a weird choice, but I'm put an A rank. I was really surprised when he died because I was like so just like torn up about Kaide and just like still so kind of like surprised by it that I was 
was like really taken off guard when Monica had died and um, it really, really shocked me. And I like the fact that they included the Monica was like getting executed each execution. It was like an extra kind of thing to look forward to and kind of speculate about, which was like fun for me. And I think for the most part, they did a pretty good job of um, making it surprising. Okay, next up is Ryoma's death. I love Ryoma. Aww. I might put it in A rank too. I really wanted Ryoma to live till the end because I feel like he had like so much room for growth. You know what I mean? And I feel like the mystery surrounding Ryoma's uh, death was really good too. I remember that trial was like super complicated and long and I thought they did a good job like setting it up. I think one of the things I really do like about V3 and is why I generally kind of think of it as being my favorite game in the franchise just because the mysteries were so like good to me and so like complicated um, for each chapter. Okay, next up is Kurumi and oh man, I love Kurumi's execution. I think that's gonna be S rank for me. Kurumi's execution was just like so brutal and so good to me. I think like one of the saddest but like best parts is the fact that, you know, Monokuma made it seem like she could still escape. Like right when she began running, like right before the execution started, she believed that she's running towards an exit, but the execution starts and she still believes, you know, she's running towards an exit and Monokuma sets it up to make it seem like, you know, hey, there really is an exit. You can, you can almost make it. You can almost save your people. And then last minute, it was obviously, you know, not true. And to see that like despair fill her up right before she dies was just so, so brutal. Like I said, I love the executions in V3. I wouldn't be shocked if I put all of these in S or S plus rank. Like they're all just so good. They all relate to the characters so well. They're all creepy, but kind of over the top. I just really, really like them. Next up, we have Anji's death. And I think I'm gonna put this in B rank. I really like the mystery surrounding her death. I remember being like really confused by it during the trial. It's so funny to me that like uh, Karekio probably could have gotten away with killing Anji if he wouldn't have killed Tenko. Cause like, I think all the evidence that was damning to him was literally in Tenko's case. But you know, he just had to do the seesaw effect. <laughs> he just had to do that. It was very important. But yeah, overall, I think the setup for um, Anji's case was really good. The reason I'm gonna put it in B instead of A is just because she was like so vocal beforehand. I remember thinking it was like almost too obvious for her to die because she was just like so vocal, so out there. And I really do feel like Danganronpa like follows that trope so much. They'll have a character act like really erratic, really vocal, really kind of like creepy or something like that. And then they die. And I kind of wish they would step out of doing that trope. You know what I mean? Next up is Tenko's death, which of course utilized the seesaw effect. So it has to go in S plus rank, baby. <laughs> of course, all hail the seesaw. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna put it in A rank. I was so freaking sad when Tenko died. Oh my gosh. I really, really did not want her to die. Oh God, if I could just have dragged her out of the cage, <laughs> I would have done it. I know a lot of people don't like her because the whole like degenerate males thing, but I really encourage people to play her free time events. I think she's a very misunderstood character and she's really sweet deep down. And the whole build up to it was just like so creepy with the caged child and like everybody like chanting and stuff. Okay, next up we have Monodom since he died before Karekio. <laughs> oh my God, Monodom actually like surprised me so much. Um, I think I might put this in A rank. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of liked the Monocub's like side story. It was like so memey, but like it was kind of funny and I really sympathize with Monodom because like, you know, he was bullied and stuff. And then when he started killing them, like, I don't know, it was just like so funny to me. And I didn't really like any of the other Monocubs that much besides Monodom. So I was kind of like rooting for him. I was like, yeah, kill Mono Fanny next, Monodom, do it. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, his death really caught me off guard and I was, I was pretty bummed out. I'm not gonna lie. I love Monodom. He's so cute, cute little psycho. Okay, next up is Karekio's execution, which I think I'm gonna put that one in S rank as well. Like I said, I really love the executions in V3. Just like the whole aesthetic, how it relates so hard to like his talent. I mean, it was just so interesting and cool to watch. And um, I like the detail of like his sister and Monokuma like exercising him at the end. Since before his execution, he mentions that he's not afraid of death because he gets to be with his sister. And then um, he also mentions that he's like looking forward to watching everybody. So I feel like Monokuma and his sister exercising him is just such like a despair inducing situation for him. Because now he sees that like his sister doesn't want him and now he doesn't even get to see the rest of the students like overcome the killing game, which he was really looking forward to doing. So I thought that was a really cool detail. And um, yeah, I think S rank is pretty appropriate for it, at least in my opinion. Oh no, I almost forgot to do Kokichi. <laughs> Kokichi Oma's death. That was so sad. Um, I might put this in S rank too. I love that scene. <laughs> that was so freaking funny. I just love the fact too, that he got this like really intense head injury and he was like, oh, what to do, what to do. <laughs> I'll screw with Saihara. <laughs> oh man, but that freaked me out so much because like, you know, two characters already died. It really got me. I was like, oh my God, what if he really did die? I was gonna be 
so upset. I'm glad he didn't die. I'm glad it was a meme. It was a super funny scene and I liked it a lot. I just realized that Minosuke doesn't actually have like a little uh, square cube. I probably would have put his in like C or D to be honest though. I feel like out of all the Monocub deaths, his was like the most apparent and that makes it less exciting to me than the ones that come later and the one before it. Okay, next up we have Miyu Iruma's death. I'm gonna put this one in A rank. I um I really like that case. That's probably one of my favorite cases in the series to be honest. If this was a trial ranking um video, I would probably have that one in the S plus. I just love like all the drama between like Kokichi and Kaido finally like um I feel like reaching like the climax of like their conflict, you know what I mean? And then like the mystery of like who the murderer is and how Kokichi like kind of was the puppet master too was just very, very intense. I really like that trial. And I really like, yeah, the whole just like mystery setup of it too with the virtual world and kind of like having to take into account like things that you can do in the virtual world that you can't do in the real world. I just thought it was overall a really good mystery. I was sad to see Mio go too. I liked her a good bit and um, yeah, I think A rank's pretty good for it. Next up we have um, the Mana Cubs deaths. Uh, so we had Mana Fanny who, God, I was so glad to see go. <laughs> I hated Mana Fanny so much because I felt like Mana Fanny kept being like, I'm the nice one, I'm the sweet one. But like she was also messed up, you know what I mean? Like, and so that's why I didn't like her very much. Um, as for her death, kind of want to put it high up just because I was so happy that she died. Of course, she does come back pretty soon after this too. So I'll put it in B rank. I think uh, B rank's pretty appropriate for it. Next up is Monotaro, which actually did shock me quite a bit. I did not expect him to die too. I think I'll go ahead and put him in B too. Cause um, even though it was really shocking, I didn't really have have a whole lot of uh, attachment to <laughs> Monotaro, so I wasn't like necessarily sad. I was just kind of like, wow, that's surprising. Okay, next up we have Gonta's Execution. I think I'm gonna put this one in A rank. I do think it's my least favorite out of the V3 executions, but with that being said, I still think it's a great execution. It was really sad to see him die to a bug since of course, you know, Gonta loves bugs. I think the only thing I didn't really like about it that much was the Wild West theme because I found it to be like kind of random um, when I first played the game. Even when I made like the execution explained video. I still didn't completely understand why they went with that choice. I feel like a jungle theme would have like made more sense and kind of fit his character better. But um, like I said, overall, I still like it. Um, I just kind of thought the theme was like a little random. Okay, next up is Kokichi's death, which I'm going to go ahead and put an S rank. Um, I kind of debated whether or not to put an S plus rank, but I think overall I do prefer Kamida's plan over Kokichi, which I will, you know, explain more in detail when I make my Kamida versus Kokichi video that I've been talking about making for way too long. <laughs> Hopefully that one will be up next. But yeah, something I really like about Kamida's plan is that um, it really is just like completely unsolvable, you know what I mean? And Kokichi's is still a really good plan, but I don't feel like it's quite as unsolvable as uh, Kamida's. Granted, this is my opinion now. I haven't done like all the research um, to make the video quite yet, but I've done like a decent amount to where I think that's kind of where I'm leaning towards, at least at the moment. But yeah, I still think it's S rank because um, I remember when I started that chapter, I was like, okay, well, <laughs> Kokichi's dead like you know this has been paralleling the other games like he's very erratic you know it's it seemed like it was gonna happen so um i really like the fact that they made a big mystery out of like who was actually in like the hydraulic press you know what i mean like was it kaido was it kokichi that aspect of it like really kept me guessing and really made me enjoy that trial a lot and although i do complain a decent amount about v3 like paralleling the old games too much i do think this is another good example of them being able to like avert your expectations pretty well by making like an extra mystery on top of like the initial one okay next up we have kaido's execution I feel like I might get a good people disagreeing about this with me, but I'm gonna put an S rank too. I've seen a lot of people say they thought that um, reusing like the Jin Kirigiri execution was like kind of lazy, but I disagree. I really like the fact that like the first and last like Monokuma run execution is both blast off. I don't know, it kind of brings the series like full circle to me. And I really like the fact that like this last Monokuma run execution ends in hope. It really like um, emphasizes the themes from the previous games and I've always really liked that fact. It was really satisfying too to see Kaido give just kind of like the middle finger to Monokuma last minute. Okay, getting to the very end here. Next up we have Samugi's death, which um, I thought it was kind of funny how it like paralleled um, Junko's death from the first game. I thought it was cool too that she turned back to like her normal self right before she died as well. But other than that, I don't have too much to say about it. I think I'm gonna put it in B rank. I kind of I prefer it to Junko's execution still. <laughs> and lastly we have 
Tebow's death, which, oh my god, made me so, so sad. I'm gonna put it in um, A rank, I think, as well. I was so excited when Kibo made it to the end of the game because I was so sure he was gonna die because he's just precious, he's adorable, he's innocent, he's just so cute. And I was just like, there's no way he's gonna survive the killing game. And then he made it all the way to the last class trial. And I was like, my God, he's made it. My boy's done it. And then he literally dies right before the epilogue. Oh my God, I was just so sad. Um, I think his death was really heroic, you know? Especially the fact that, you know, he looks to make sure that like Saihara and Maki and um, Himiko are okay before he decides to sacrifice himself by breaking the wall to let them escape. I thought it was really sweet. And um, Kibo is just such a good, such a good boy, you know what I mean? I love him so much. But yeah, this will conclude the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, feel free to do this yourself. I'm going to link this exact tier maker in the description. It's pretty fun. And um, let me know if you agree or disagree with my rankings. And um, hopefully I explained myself pretty well um, with each of these. And hopefully I didn't ramble too long. I kind of have a bad habit of rambling. <laughs> I'm sure those of you who have watched my Let's Plays and my streams know that. But yeah, I will definitely try to get up that Kokichi versus Nagito video next. Hopefully sometime next week. Um, hopefully on a weekday. That's my, that's my goal. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like or a comment and subscribe if you did. And I will see you guys real soon.